hello friends today in this tutorial i will be telling you about a http request library for node.js which is got here so this is the library got so if you go to npmjs.com and if you type this command npm install got you will install this request library so you can see that it is a very popular library over 10 million downloads weekly downloads are is there and this library is universal library if you want to make http request here this is a very simple example which is given to us now let me just make our node application npm init dash y so this will create the empty package dot json file and uh, after that we can just install this library by npm i got it is got so this will install this dependency into our package dot json file so it will hardly take 5 to 10 seconds so just wait and let me also install node mod so it will automatically refresh our application so it will be a dev dependency so dash dash save dash dev so it will install this so just wait So it will hardly take 5 to 10 seconds. So basically you first of all we will require this library by the require function and then we basically we will make a async function and in inside this we will have a try and catch block and here we will pass our URL whatever URL that you want to make the request and then you can just get the response by response.body or if any kind of error take place we can just get it by error.response.body. So let me just it is done now you can see that now I will be opening this inside Visual Studio code so I will show you two three examples of uh, how to make request with this library so this is if you open this you will have your package.json file and uh, inside this you will ha see the dependency section you will see that this file will be there package.json and uh, inside this dependency section we have got this library which is got here with its version number and now we will create the starting point uh, index.js file just create a new file index.js and first of all what what I need to do here is that I need to import the library so I can just write a simple comment import the library so we can just write const got and we need to require it first of all so require got and now after that we need to write a very simple async function async let me just go to the documentation once again so it will have a parentheses like this this will be an arrow function and you need to just after this you need to write a set of parentheses like this this completes this async function uh, on the new line we need to write this so inside this guys we will make a simple request so inside this we will have a try catch block try catch so inside this try catch block guys we will have uh, the in this catch we will have the error which whichever error take place and inside this try we just need to make a request to the API whatever API that you want to make a request let me just declare a response variable and we will use this got library and here I will pass a URL let me just pass simplest of URL which is google.com so we are making a request to it so if the request is successful then we can just uh, log the response so basically we need to await this response so we are here inside async function so we can just use this keyword await and now basically we can just print out the response which is coming back from the api from the request so we can just write here console log response dot body and now we can just run the application so go to package.json file and just rename this to start start script and here you just need to write our nodemon library we need to use this so whenever we make any kind of changes this will automatically run for us so we can just write nodemon index.js so 
so when we go back to command prompt just write npm start so hopefully it will be logging out the response here it is saying to us require is not a function let me just see guys what is the problem here mm. I think that yes we need to make a semicolon here that's why and now you will see that guys it is uh, console logging the whole response which is coming back from Google website you can see that this is a complete HTML code so if you go to Google and if you let me just show you if you go to Google here this is my Google page if I go to view page source so it is returning all this data to us in the console you can change the website let's suppose I change this to Facebook so now you will see a different result altogether so basically now if I ch check the risk you will see that now it will be having the HTML code for Facebook like this so now we are successfully fetching the HTML code now what we want is we want to fetch some data from the API so we will be using let's suppose uh, the source sorry we, we can just use any kind of API let's suppose I use api.github.com and uh, slash users so basically I'm making a get request to this endpoint so you will see that it will return a basic response to us so you can see that these are a set of users out there I can even return this by making this to the browser as well so what I need to do is that in order to return this to the browser we just need to set up express app for this so this is very easy first of all we need to sp stop the server and install express so we can just install this like this npm i express so basically this will create a http server for our application node.js application so it will hardly take minutes here and let me just write the code for that so after that we can just uh, import express require express and we can just make our app const app express app dot listen 4000 so on port 4000 we are listening for the request so if you make a get request let's suppose we make uh, github slash github or we can just make it on the home route so request response so we can just make this inside a function so what we can do here is that we can transfer this code into our get request cut this code here and uh, paste it here and now we can easily uh, send this response to our uh, HTML document this is very easy we can just write here uh, response dot send response dot body like this and now basically our if I execute this command npm start you will see that it will start this app on port uh, 4000 if I go to localhost 4000 So you will see that now it is returning this JSON data to us. So I think that I have this extension on. So basically this is the JSON data which is returned to us like this. I can even shorten this length here. Let's suppose I only want to if I just go to github api let's suppose github api search 10 users so inside this there is a rate limit also so if you go to this developer.github.api search users and uh, there is a queue parameter as well for example it will tell you total uh, these are the parameters that you can provide to, th to this API 
so I am looking for a parameter which restricts so find users by various criteria this returns total count I think that uh, there is lots of parameters that you can try but this is the gist of it because we are making use of this got API and we are making HTTP request to GitHub API and we are returning this response here. So you can even try more things with this library apart from just making HTTP get request here. You can even create files on your file system as well. So let's suppose I want to save the file of uh, index.html let's suppose in that scenario what can I do here is that I can use this example let's suppose await pipeline so there is a pipeline method inside this so I can just delete this for now inside this await pipeline I, I can just change this to google.com and we also need to import this file system which is a built-in module so file system require file system so now if you are if I run this so it will automatically run for us run this for us so, uh, oh sorry we need to refresh our application because we need to go to this route for this to happen if I re refresh it so hopefully it will be going to google.com and it will create this index.html file in the current directory. So just wait. Let me just show you the example once again what is Oh sorry we need to just uh, get this promisify this is a stream dot library we just need to also get this and we also need to import this stream library for this so I think that we need to install stream so npm i stream just install this library execute this command so npm install stream so it has installed this library and the second library that you need to install is promisify promisify like this this is a next library that you need to install npmi promisify let me just check the spelling mistake promisify like this and let me just uh, once again start my node server by npm start and now what we want we first of all need to import the stream library right here at the top con stream require stream and then we just need to after this we also need to have our promise file pipeline let me just create this pipeline variable so we need to require promise file Oh sorry, promiseify. We need to import this promiseify right here at the top. Yes, so this needs to be required by this. So there is a util library also. Let me just paste this statement. I think that util is a built-in library. Let me just check by executing npm i util if it is a Node.js library. So execute this command guys so it has added some packages npm start let me again restart my server and pass here promiseify and inside this there is a we need to pass here stream dot pipeline like this And now if I refresh it so 
So basically you can see that it has created this index.html file and it is holding all the code which is there inside. Uh, I think that we have passed this, oh sorry, we have passed a wrong address. So that is why it does. So basically if I now refresh it, refresh this application, if I go to this route once again, and now you will see that it, it fetched the HTML source code of google.com. It created this index.html file and now it has created this inside our root directory. So with the, with this help of got library, you can even create HTML files, remote HTML files on the go and uh, save this onto your local machine as well. So this is a complete example that I've shown to you. I can even change this to, let's suppose another quick info. And now I can just change the file name to quick info like this quick info. And now you can see that quick info dot HTML. So you can see that. Let me just check if it is the address is correct or not by control C control V. Facebook.com. So it is working now. Let me just paste Facebook.com. Click info is not working. HTTPS Facebook.com. And now you just rename this to Facebook. If I run this, you will see that will create this facebook.html file and you will see all the HTML source code which is present of Facebook. You can see that. So this is what yet another example of this got library. With the help of this, you can just fetch the HTML source code of any website and store it inside your directory. So let me just see more some more examples that you can do. So this was just a simple crash course on this library, got library. So you can just read the documentation. It is a very big library. So I cannot cover this library in just one video. So if you like this video, then please hit the like button and I will be seeing you in the next video.